article I found something David Stokes is very liberal on, and that is the um, one club length no closer to the hole. Very liberal when you take your relief, I've, I've noticed. Well, people always ask me why I putt with my driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, much, it's a much longer one club length from the hole. <laughs> Uh, smart to me. We went out and played golf on uh, Friday, courtesy of you. Uh, thank you very much. It was a great time. You, me, Andrew, and uh, Tom Alpers. Uh, Tom, who's Tom? Albus. Tom, Albus. My, my buddy Tom Albus. Tom, who works at the, um, uh, where does he work? Are He's a get... lawyer with the U.S. Attorney's Office. I hope he called in. I hope he said he was, um, I hope he took a day off because we, we just outed him on the radio. <laughs> you did. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, the zoo museum tax you want to talk about uh, this morning. Well, we have a new video up on it at showmeinstitute.org. And the video follows up on a op-ed that ran in the Beacon about two weeks ago by a, by a former intern for us and now a, sort of a part-time researcher, Haley Albers is her name. And she's a she did a terrific job with this. And I would encourage people to... Check out the video and it's simply asked a question. Is it fair that residents of the city and the county pay the property taxes for something that everybody in the region enjoys and uses otherwise for free? Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm moving to St. Charles, yes. It's such an interesting debate because everybody, one of the things you learn when you move to, to St. Louis is that they're so proud of the fact that the zoo is free. But really, that's not true at all. The zoo, you actually pay for the zoo with your property tax if you live in the city or the county. Right. And if you live in St. Charles, Jefferson Franklin, or Metro East, you don't. And I realize, we realize that most people pay something when they go to the zoo. They pay for parking or they buy some food or some. So you, most people pay for something. But some people do go in and park in the park, walk in, not buy anything, and right. enjoy it for free. And most of the other people pay a lot less than the cost of their visit. And that's made up for by the residential and commercial property taxes in the city and county. And as the city and the county become, as they have for the past few decades, a smaller part of the overall region, I mean, is it time to consider expanding that tax base? And I think it is. The zoo mu museum tax takes into account the zoo, the art museum, the history museum, the botanical gardens, as well as Forest Park, right? The science center. And the science center. Right. right, not Forest Park For itself. Forest Park's a different uh, tax. Is, is that not? Is there not a Forest Park tax in there somewhere? Well, there's the St. Louis City Parks tax, which okay. certainly goes towards Forest Park significantly. And then there's Forest Park Forever, which is the which the, is a nonprofit the nonprofit group that raises money for the for Forest Park and right. does tr a tremendous job. So you would you would be in favor of the zoo museum tax. Entering into St. Charles and Franklin County and Jefferson County and some of the outlying areas. I want to I want to pick my words carefully yeah, I, here, I, and that's I know why I want to. I know that can be. I know that can sound boring, <laughs> but, but what I'd be in favor of is asking the question for the other surrounding counties in the area: St. Charles, Jefferson, Franklin, St. Clair, Madison, and and say, ask them if they'd like to be the tax expanded to those counties, and if they say no, to then get very serious about charging admission fees to these entities. There's, some of them already charge admission fees. I mean, you're not, right. it's not free to go to the Botanical Garden. Right. It's not, as you know, as a, as a neighbor of theirs who had, who had, my who issues. had issues with them. Who had my issues with the Botanical Garden. Uh, no, you're right. I, in New York, and, and, and if, well, let me say this. If you go to the St. Peter's Community Center, you have to show you're a resident of St. Saint, Saint Peter's, right? And you get in for free. Right. Um, if... I have no problem not charging people uh, in St. Louis City or St. Louis County if they want to go to the zoo. You show you're a St. Louis County or city resident, you pay through your property tax or your rental tax or whatever, right? If you live in St. Charles, you should not use that zoo for free because you're not, not paying for it. So you should, if you live outside of this, this taxing district, you should, you should pay for it. I agree. And I don't really care whether the residents of the Outer areas say they'd like to pay for it via property taxes, which I think is perfectly legitimate. Right. Or if they'd say, no, we don't want the property taxes. Some people out here use it a lot. Some people never use it. Right. We think an admission fee is a fair way to go. I really have no preference between those two. But I do think that continuing on long term with the everybody but St. Louis City and County gets in right. for free, I don't think that's a good long-term strategy for these 
institutions which are so important to our region. Also on your website, you've uh, broken down the Laclede gas uh, possible subsidy to move two and a half blocks away. Right. That is a, that was fun. And we've got a video up there as well at showmeinstitute.org. Uh, there's been a lot of attention the past few weeks since, since uh, the uh, Komen Group announced they were look, looking for a TIF to help move Laclede gas from the Laclede gas building to the former General American building. I guess it's still called that. At a seventh and market, and this is two blocks. This is, and and that's that's fine. I mean, businesses move all the time, but we shot a video there, just sort of going to to the Gateway One on the, or going to Keener Plaza, and showing how you can go from that building to this building, and here, it's two blocks, and you're talking between the TIF and tax and historic tax credits, over sixteen million dollars in public funds to help this move, and I just think that's the perfect example of how. This abuse of tax credits and TIF and other things, it's not growing our economy. It's just shuffling things around and reducing the tax base. Somebody said to me, you know, if they don't do this, they could threaten to move to Clayton or to, you know, Webster or to St. Charles. I mean, it doesn't matter where the Laclede group ends up, just as long as it's somewhere in the region. You can pit one against the other. Um, you could also cut a deal where you could just keep them where they are. Haven't they, they done that before where, you know, you can— I know, aren't there law, some, some, some law firms who are threatening to go somewhere and they sort of cut a deal to sort of keep them where they are? I mean, this is the height of, I don't know what it is, it's the height of something to 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 pit one building a, against another two blocks away for all this this money. I mean, the madness has to stop somewhere. Well, you're right, and this would be a good time to consider stopping it. Yeah. But you're dead right. There are certain businesses downtown that have gone for some for some tax breaks to, to basically stay where they are. And sometimes those subsidies have been large, and sometimes they've been surprisingly small. And and if Lecle, you know, I'm sure Laclede Gas or any other tenant considering a move with any moderate-sized number of employees to make City Hall, City Hall stand up and listen, right. they're going to do that. It's not really the company's fault or the developer's fault. They're going to take what they're offered. But we just need more discipline at local government here in the St. Louis area to say to say no to this. The other side, though, is, you know what, there's a lot of jobs, and they can take their jobs to St. Saint- Charles if St. Charles cuts them a better deal. What, is, what does St. Charles care if they give them a sweetheart deal? It's just all gravy. It's a zero-sum sum game. St. Louis City loses. St. Charles wins. The county, uh, the, the, uh, the company gets a lower tax base. Um, so the cities have to do something because other communities keep poaching all of their jobs. I mean, absolutely. And this is why, you know, there are changes that need to be made. We need to, like we saw in Ellisville, we need to empower the county TIF commission to have really the final say on these types of TIF subsidies. Now, that one might not matter in this particular deal, right. but it's an example of the changes we need here. And we need a lot, we need to implement a lot of the recommendations suggested by the state tax credit commission, which issued another report last year, which had a lot of good stuff in it, which didn't get acted on at all by the legislature or the or the governor. Do you have a uh, comment or a thought on the uh, football game played at Bush Stadium and now the questions about the turf? Well, I didn't get to to watch that game, but I think it it would be funny for for the the Cardinals. It, it, we, we'd all hate to see a Cardinals player break a leg in the last game here because of turf issues, because of the football game. That, I mean, that w- would be a disaster. That would be bad. But, um, no, I was just, just a lot of people are up in arms, worried about the Cardinals and the turf, and I'm telling people that it's way overblown, and I wouldn't worry about it. The experts know what they're doing. That's I, think, I think they probably do. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's, we can agree on everything today. David Stokes, when can we read you, when can we see you, and where can we see those videos? You can see these videos at showmeinstitute.org, and you can read our blog at Show Me Daily each day, and, and follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. That's David Stokes from the Show Me Institute. David, have a good week. Thanks. Have a good week, McGraw. All right.